Today, FDA approvals in large B-cell lymphoma and melanoma, priority review designations in cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma and non-small cell lung cancer, a new drug application submitted in acute myeloid leukemia, and a European approval for a new PD-1 inhibitor dosing schedule. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA has approved the chimeric antigen receptor therapy Tisagenlis Lucil for use in adult patients with relapsed refractory large B-cell lymphoma, including diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, high-grade B-cell lymphoma, and DLBCL arising from follicular lymphoma after two or more lines of systemic therapy. The approval is based on findings from the Phase II Juliet study in which the CD19-directed CAR T-cell product reached an overall response rate of 50% in adult patients with relapsed refractory DLBCL. Moreover, the complete response rate was 32% and the partial response rate was 18%. The median duration of response had not been reached. Regarding safety, all grade adverse events occurring in at least 20% of the 106 infused patients included cytokine release syndrome, infections, pyrexia, diarrhea, nausea, fatigue, hypotension, edema, and headache. Tisagenlis Lucil became the first CAR T-cell therapy approved by the FDA in August 2017 when the agency authorized the treatment's use for patients up to 25 years of age with B-cell precursor acute lymphoblastic leukemia that is refractory or in second or later relapse. In melanoma, the FDA approved the combination of dabrafenib and trametinib for the adjuvant treatment of patients with BRAF V600E or V600K positive stage 3 melanoma following complete resection. The approval is based on data from the Phase 3 COMBI-AD study in which adjuvant treatment with dabrafenib and trametinib reduced the risk of relapse or death by 53% versus placebo for patients with BRAF mutant stage 3 disease. Additionally, after a median follow-up of 2.8 years, the three-year relapse-free survival rate with dabrafenib and trametinib was 58% versus 39% for placebo. The median RFS was not reached with the combination versus 16.6 .6 months for placebo, and RFS was improved with dabrafenib and trametinib across all subgroups. Overall hazard ratios range from 0.33 to 0.55, in favor of the combination versus placebo. Early data for overall survival showed that 86% of patients in the combination arm were alive at three years versus 77% with placebo. At an interim analysis, the OS advantage was not yet deemed statistically significant. The FDA has granted a priority review to a biologics license application for simiplumab as a treatment for patients with metastatic cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma or those with locally advanced CSCC who are ineligible for surgery. The submitted application was based on results from the Phase II Empower CSCC1 study in which the overall response rate was 46.3% in patients with advanced CSCC. Regeneron and Sanofi, the co-developers of Simiplumab, also submitted supporting data from two Phase I expansion cohorts of patients with advanced disease. Updated data from these phase one and two studies will be presented at the 2018 ASCO annual meeting. Phase one data for simiplumab in advanced CSCC, which were reported at the 2017 ASCO annual meeting, demonstrated a disease control rate of 69.2%. Simiplumab previously received an FDA breakthrough therapy designation in CSCC. The FDA is scheduled to make its decision on the application by October 28, 2018. In non-small cell lung cancer, the FDA has granted a priority review to a supplemental biologics license application for frontline pembrolizumab combined with chemotherapy for patients with metastatic non-squamous disease. The application is based on the Phase three Keynote 189 trial in which the addition of pembrolizumab to pemetrexid and either cisplatin or carboplatin in the first-line setting reduced the risk of death by more than 50% in patients with NSCLC without EGFR or ALK mutations. Keynote 189 is the confirmatory trial to convert the accelerated approval of this regimen into a full approval. In the study, at a median follow-up of 10.5 months, the estimated 12-month overall survival rate was 69.2% in the pembrolizumab arm versus 49.4% in the control group. 
the median OS was not reached in the pembrolizumab cohort compared with 11.3 months in the chemotherapy alone arm. The OS benefit was observed irrespective of pdl one status. A new drug application for gilteritinib has been submitted to the FDA for the treatment of adult patients with FLT3 mutation positive, relapsed, or refractory acute myeloid leukemia. The NDA is based on data from the ongoing Phase 3 Admiral study, which is evaluating gilteritinib versus salvage chemotherapy in adult patients with FLT3 positive, relapsed, refractory AML. Acellus Pharma, the developer of gilteritinib, has also submitted an application to Japanese regulatory authorities for marketing approval for the FLT3 inhibitor in the same setting. Data from the open-label multi-center admiral trial have not yet been made available. The co-primary endpoints are overall survival and complete remission, or CR with partial hematological recovery. In October 2017, the FDA granted fast-track designation to gilteritinib for adult patients with FLT3 mutation positive relapse refractory AML. In Europe, a four-week dosing schedule for nivolumab has been approved by the European Commission for the treatment of patients with advanced melanoma and previously treated renal cell carcinoma. The Commission specifically approved a four-week dosing regimen with 480 milligrams of nivolumab for these indications. Additionally, the EU approved replacing weight-based dosing with 240 milligrams every two weeks for the six nivolumab monotherapy indications approved in the European Union, which are melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, RCC, classical Hodgkin lymphoma, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma, and urothelial carcinoma. In March 2018, the FDA approved a supplemental biologics license application, adding the four-week dosing schedule for nivolumab across several of the PD-1 inhibitors indications. Physicians now have the option of using either the new four-week dosing schedule or the previously approved schedule of 240 milligrams every two weeks, now available in a new 240 milligram vial. This week, we sat down with Dr. Anis Yunus of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center to discuss initial steps for treatment of patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The treatment of patients with advanced stage diffuse large B-cell lymphoma hasn't changed in almost four decades with the exception of rituximab, which was added about almost 15, 20 years ago. So the expected outcome for frontline regimens is that we cure about 60, maybe 65% of the patients. For those who are not cured with frontline regimens or relapse after uh, frontline regimens, the standard of care right now is autologous transplant. But in the era of uh, rituximab-based therapy, the um, benefit from autologous transplant has almost reduced by half. So that tells us that we need something new, effective, to help patients who don't respond to frontline therapy or relapse from autologous transplant or don't benefit from transplant. For this patient population the, who failed frontline and second-line therapy, the survival is really poor. You know, the average survival rarely exceeds one year, which is miserable. And there's not a single agent approved by the FDA for these patients, patients with relapsed large lymphoma, in more than four decades. And that's where the excitement about CAR T cells. Now we're seeing cell therapy, which is new to all of us, producing up to 80% response rate, which is unheard of. We never saw 80% response rate with any agent, despite all the agents being tested over the last four decades. And the complete response rate, CR rate, close to 50% in these patients who failed frontline and sometimes you know, autologous transplant. And I think that's why it is you know, generating a lot of excitement. That's why the first drug got breakthrough, got approved based on phase two non-randomized trial and um, hopefully additional cell therapy will be approved for the same indication. That's all for today. Thank you for watching On Clive News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.